Just what in the heck is a radar confirmed tornado? Is that real? Can you trust it? And if it is a real thing, how does that even work? This is Michael, and I'm a big fan of chasing photogenic tornadoes on the flat, treeless, open prairies and fields of America's high plains. But tornadoes obviously don't make it a point to be photogenic or easy for storm chasers to see and photograph. They also happen at night or in the often horribly obscured skies of the eastern United States. Sometimes they like to wrap themselves in very wet invisibility cloaks. Such was the case with my two recent storm chases in March of 2021, a nighttime tornado in Texas and a gnarly beast in northern Alabama. And yes, I finally did it. I finally did a storm chase in the southern US. I've told myself ever since 2011, it would take another 10 out of 10 forecast to get me to do it. And March 25, 2021 was it. It's a great thing that for decades, we have radar to let us peer over the trees, forget the need for sunlight, or pull back the cloak of rain and cloud to see inside tornado-producing storms, learn their secrets, and even warn the public of impending danger. Today, weather radar technology can let us see, in air quotes, direct evidence that a tornado is in progress and causing damage. But if you're my age and older and have ever been in a tornado warning with the description, radar indicated rotation, or a thunderstorm capable of producing a tornado. Then now seeing radar confirmed, extremely large and dangerous tornado probably seems suspicious to you. For others, this might still seem weird juxtaposed against other descriptions like trained spotter confirmed a dangerous tornado. Wouldn't ground truth be much more serious than just radar? And to explain a bit better how we got here, let's briefly walk through the history of tornado detection via radar. In the 1950s, this was what the Weather Bureau had to work with a black and white image of rain and hail echoes, yielding only the shape and only just barely the intensity of a storm or rain shower. These radars didn't have Doppler, the ability to detect the shift in radar echoes that occurs when bouncing off of rain or snow, moving in different speeds and directions. These radars also couldn't tell the difference between hail, snow, rain, sleet, or anything else, like a flock of birds or bats. It all looks the same on the old WSR 57 radar. While Doppler technology existed already, it would be another 30 years before being implemented across the United States. WSR 88D Doppler Radar, or as NOAA coined it, NEXRAD. NEXRAD radar, right out of the gate, gave us wonderful, high-resolution scans of storm wind speed and the direction of precipitation and its intensity. Full volume scans of the various layers of storms enabled forecasters to determine a storm's potential hail content, wind speeds inside of a storm, and even a storm's height. Thanks to this upgrade, National Weather Service forecasting offices could determine if storms might be rotating. And if other signs point to the possibility of tornadoes, we could now see more accurate tornado warnings and longer warning lead times. They've increased from an average of just a few minutes to as much as 15 minutes, or in some cases even more. On radar, we can identify weaker rotation as a mesocyclone, a spinning storm, while tighter and more pronounced colors coupled together indicate a tornadic vortex signature, or TVS, meaning a tornado is possible or perhaps even likely. But this system isn't perfect. Many storms rotate, even tightly, and don't produce tornadoes. So ground truth was still necessary for confirmed tornadoes. Spotters, emergency responders, chasers, and public reports were required to determine whether a tornado was present or imminent or had produced damage. Let me illustrate the problem of ground truth alone, however. In this case, I'm right on Interstate 65, surrounded by trees. This area is dense as jungle. There's really no other way to spot tornadoes here, unless of course you have a drone. Even still, can you see the tornado in this footage? It's there. Let me zoom in and enhance this. Yeah, this was difficult at best to spot live. I couldn't tell. Even with a drone, I couldn't confirm the presence of a tornado from a safe location. However, looking at radar, it's almost certainly there. And this is why radar confirmation of tornadoes is important. Even with spotters in place, they might not be able to report anything unless the tornado is right on top of them. And that's a bad idea, and potentially not helpful either, as it could delay reports significantly. Watch as this tornado crosses Interstate 65 near Calera, Alabama on March 25, 2021. I'm less than a mile from this tornado, and yet, where is it? I'll zoom in, enhance, and draw lines to approximate the shape of the tornado as it's crossing the road. And yes, you are seeing vehicles and semis driving right into it. 
Keep in mind, everyone with emergency phone alerts on or listening to local radio would have been informed by now of an incoming tornado. Much of the state of Alabama has been in a tornado watch for hours. My point is, as amazing as the technology and warning times have become, people are still just not getting the information or they don't take it seriously. Respect the polygon. Every storm today will mean business. Respect the respect. And if you're in the polygon, you respect the polygon. Respect the polygon. Lucky for these motorists, this tornado only produced EF0 or weak damage as it crossed the expressway. Winds just slow enough to avoid tossing these cars off the roads. Where's my truck? So let's now talk about improvements made around 2010, still using the now 30 plus year old WSR 88D Nexrad radars, new technologies patched in have further improved tornado warnings. One change was sales. While not really an equipment upgrade, this software mode could be activated during severe weather conditions to increase the number of times these radars would scan the lower sections of storms. The problem solved here is that some storms could begin rotating, produce a tornado, and then weaken entirely between these low angle radar scans, or about five to seven minutes apart. With sales, volume scans are interrupted with more lowest elevation scans, revealing rotation in storms in three minute intervals instead of seven. Good enough to catch even the most sneaky of spin ups. A second upgrade increased the resolution of scans. It was a bit like upgrading your TV from standard definition to 4K, making smaller circulations less likely to go unnoticed. But for the reasons I've already mentioned, rotation alone does not a confirmed tornado make. Many storms rotate and do not produce tornadoes. Putting up a tornado warning for every single rotating storm would mean lots of false positives. The National Weather Service could diminish public trust if there are too many tornado warnings and too few confirmed tornadoes in reality. Throughout the last decade, WSR 88D Nexrad radars were upgraded with dual polarization or dual pole. This is just shorthand for saying that now radar beams are transmitted with two different wave orientations, one horizontal and one vertical. Now echoes coming back from the radar have new characteristics we can look at, like vertical motion and precipitation, or mixed rain and snow conditions, and even hail size. One way to observe these variations is with the product called correlation coefficient. And this is just shorthand for saying how similar are radar echoes in a given location to one another. How well do different echoes correlate? Low correlation could mean, for instance, that echoes are bouncing off rain and snow at the same time. Or it could mean hail and rain, or raindrops or hail of different size. Also, we can finally identify anything that isn't weather related as something entirely different. Bats, flock of birds, and dust now look different from rain or snow. And that's where the game changes for identifying tornadoes on radar. Tornadoes loft debris, leaves, tree branches, bits of shingles, parts of homes, insulation, or really anything imaginable. The suck zone. If a storm has strong rotation and correlation among these radar echoes drops in the same general location, this is almost unmistakably due to a tornado in progress. Very low correlation coefficient indicates debris of many different shapes and sizes being lofted high enough to be seen by radar. These drops in correlation coefficient in the right context are called a TDS, or Tornado Debris Signature. Not only can tornadoes now be confirmed by radar, one can even estimate tornado strength by how far up the debris is being lofted and how quickly the storm is estimated to be rotating. The science is ongoing and getting better all the time. Sam Emerson created a handy scatter chart that one could use to plot the height above the ground the debris is seen and the strength of the rotation or V-Rot. Significant tornadoes then can be detected as they are happening and differentiated from weaker tornadoes. The tornado I intercepted in Alabama at one point earlier in its life was producing areas of high-end EF3 damage as confirmed by damage surveys, while Sam's predictor was showing at least an EF3, possibly stronger from that very tornado while the storm was still in progress. Today, the National Weather Service issues tornado warnings with specific language that corresponds with this radar information or ground truth observations from spotters. The more certain the information about the storm and tornado in progress from radar and spotters, the more ominous and serious this language will be. But here's a counterexample. 
This storm produced a tornado at night not far from Childress, Texas on May 12, 2021. But are we certain this is a tornado? Is this cloud rotating? I'm only getting quick glimpses of it when the lightning flashes in just the right part of the storm. This rural area, however, has few trees, few buildings, and therefore very little stuff that can be lofted into the storm by a tornado. So correlation coefficient drops are not the end-all, be-all of tornado detection. Spotters are still needed in this case. What CC drops, or TDSs, in the appropriate place tell National Weather Service forecasters and anyone watching the radar is that a storm is actually producing a tornado. That tornado is doing damage, and anyone in the direct path is in danger. Should you take the language, radar confirmed tornado, seriously then? Absolutely. Radar indicated rotation is specific language and good reason for putting out tornado warnings before damage is being done or before life or property become threatened. While a radar confirmed tornado means someone or some things already having a really bad day. And both are good reason to take cover immediately if you are in the path. If you're in the polygon, you respect the polygon. Respect the polygon. Thanks for watching. If you've been in the path of a radar confirmed tornado in recent years, let me know your experience down in the comments. This channel covers extreme weather, astronomy, and outdoor adventure with in person and first hand experience. If that sounds good to you, check out my channel page or hit subscribe. And until the next video, I'll see you out there.